Hey, what is going on? You're Redundant Raticate. Coming at you with some Luke Metalization action today. Uh, we're trying out the Pokey Gear build. Been inspired by my discussions with Jake Gearhart, who is quite the Luke Metal enthusiast. I'll leave a link for uh, their Twitter in the description below. Go check them out. They're always talking about and posting new uh, and interesting thoughts about Luke Metal. So if you guys want to get some more input on Luke Metal, they are the person to follow. So yeah, link in the description to their Twitter. Yeah, I'm trying out the coding energy if you guys have ever heard me talk about luke metal station i was never a fan of the weakness guard energy in this deck and my initial testing with coding led me to kind of the same findings where i just felt really bad but once again talking with the uh, jake gearhart inspired me to like try it out again and specifically i wanted to try out this pokey gear build that's been going around a little bit recently uh no tag calls uh no caitlin and cynthia we still have mal and lana's and actually have three in here now to kind of make up for the fact that it's going to be a little bit Harder to find without the tag calls. I uh, don't have the Caitlyn Cynthia to, to get one back out of the discard top pile. Potentially went up to three of them. Made it easier to find with the uh, Pokey Gears. Um, and yeah, trying out the Cody Energy again. Like I said, my initial testing with the Cody Energy when it first came out was just that it just kind of felt like weakness guard energy all over again. Sure, it provides a metal energy, which is great. It's that much better. But I would rather just be more consistent about playing basic energies, hitting more off Intrepid Sword, uh, potentially getting them to the discard pile more easily to use with Metal Saucer. But I'm, I'm giving the coding energy another shot here. Um, pretty straightforward as far as Luke Metal Station decks go. Two lines of cards here, and we don't even fill up both lines. You know, two Lucario, Mel Metal, four Zacian, uh, two Zamacenta, three Poke Doll, uh, four Metal Saucer, four Poke Gear, four Quick Ball, four Switch, four Bosses Orders, three Mel and Lana, four Marnie, four Research, four <laughs> Metal Goggles, three Coding, and 11 Basic Metals. Now, if you guys want to check out this deck, with a uh, Stun Fisk um, for the Decidueye matchup or the Tapu Fini for the Baby Blonde matchup, go right ahead. I would say cut this third Lily's Poke Doll here. I'm a huge fan of as many Poke Dolls as possible in this deck because finding them and having them in play opens up so many more options, I feel like, turn to turn. But um, if you do want a little bit of help in either of those matchups specifically, I would say just cut this third Lily's Poke Doll, add in the Stun Fisk or add in the Fini. I don't think I would play both because then in a lot of other matchups, you really just don't want to open that one prize Pokemon. So reducing your chances of doing that by not playing any of them or as soon as possible is ideal. So yeah, I would say uh, come slowly poke it all if you want to add the Feeny or the, or the Sunfish. Otherwise, just rocking it like this should be fine. But yeah, let's go ahead. Let's see how the Poke Gears and the Coding Energy feel. Let's get into some games. All right, getting into our first game. Our opponent is going first. We open double Zacians. I'm not going to put the second one down quite yet, although I'll probably want it down at some point. Zigzagoon start, uh, dark deck box. I'm gonna go ahead and make a guess that our opponent is playing Eternatus, which is a pretty good matchup. If it is the poison Eternatus build, the matchup becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, ooh, they got Weavile in here, so they could have some other tricks like uh, Darkrai Umbreon, um, Tag Team GX. I've seen that before in the Weavile builds of the Eternatus deck. Um, they can eventually build up enough energy and play to use it, or sometimes they play like red and blue to get extra energy in play. Uh, so that that's definitely, definitely something we might have to look out for. I'm not too worried about that being a thing, but it could be in their deck for sure. Oh, top deck, a Marnie, which is great. I'm going to go with... <clears throat> I do like to use Luke Metal in this matchup to initially take away the energy off their first Eternatus. So I think I want to quick ball away this. Have the option of Metal Saucer. Grab the Lucario Metal Metal. And then we want to find the other, the two Zamazentas um, as well. Maybe I should just grab the Zamazenta here. Maybe I'm being a little bit uh, greedy. I don't want two Zations in play. One Zation is fine, and this one might go down pretty early on. There's a Zam. We could even get the second Zam already with this Quick Ball, but I don't have any great targets. I could discard an energy, but I, I'm fine to hold off on that. So we're just going to go ahead and Trepid. Not a whole ton of good options there. Um, but we'll be able to go into the uh, full metal wall if they do take this knockout on the Zacian. And then we can go into double Zamacentas from there. We got a Doll, a Mal, and Lana to work with. We don't want to put another Zacian down, though. Because then that allows our opponent to kind of go knock out Zacian, knock out the Lucario Mel Metal, and then knock out Zacian. And they never even have to go through a Zamacenta, uh, potentially. So, they, especially if they play four boss, it's not that difficult for them to get there. Especially if we're using Zamacenta to attack. We're only doing 130 damage. Which is the only thing we want to KOing is stuff like Zigzagoons and stuff, so... You definitely have to uh, play it a little bit slower than that. Um, we're gonna, we definitely want to try an Intrepid Sword again here, I think, if we can. And there is that Weavile. It only moves basic Dark Energy, though. So these two Hiding Energies. Okay, and then they're going to Marnia. So we get New Hand. We didn't get to use the Quick Ball for the Zamazent. I was maybe a little bit greedy there with not... Uh, 
not uh, just quick balling away and energy there to grab it. I definitely didn't want to get rid of a Malin Lana. Um, we see our opponent here got the knockout on our station, which was kind of expected. Uh, it wouldn't be, it wasn't going to be really that hard for our opponent to pull that off. So, um, and we have the GX attack. We're going to be able to use that full metal wall. We'll take away these two energy off of this Eternatus V Max. So they can't return knockout or even hit our Lucario my metal. And then we're going to be able to actually boss Cave the Spirit Tomb, which it looks like is our answer for our Zam Ascenta. Um, I got goggles for our Zam as well. We got the second Zam as well. <laughs> So things are going all right here. I don't want to bench this yet, I don't think. Um, I could get Goon Ping, basically. I just don't want to get free Goon Pings on it. Um, so we can wait until... I mean, we're just going to try and wait as long as possible, basically. Um, so yeah, it looks like the Spirit Tomb is kind of their answer for Zamazenta here. But we got this boss. So this next turn, we can go boss, steel fist, knock out the Spirit Tomb. Taking care of one of the few things that they probably have in their deck to be able to even hit our Zamazentas. Um, and then we want to try and get this Lucario Mel Metal to the bench. So when we Steel Fist, we'll take an energy out of our deck. So we can even just hard retreat to the Zamacenta if we want to, something like that. Um, yeah, because we basically, we, if they want to get these, these prize cards from the Lucario Mel Metal by attacking with the turns of VMAX, we really want to make them work for it. We want to make them work for it as much as possible, um, here. Uh, just like, yeah, just make them work for it, basically, is the idea. Don't let them just get, like, free hits on our Lucario Mel Metal. Try and get this to the bench behind the Zamacenta. They want to play a boss for the turn. Um, to try and bring it up, sure, that's fine with us. Draw into a switch. Yeah, we're gonna boss. Okay, the spirit tomb. Once again, not much going on in the hand. We have second Zam, but uh, yeah, but we will take this energy out of the deck. Now we can hard retreat this Lucario Metal, like I was saying. Just get it out of there and be like, all right, you gotta gotta do something different. Um, we can get hit by Weavile actually. Uh, but it does take three energy, and they, they only have one in play here on a turn to V Max. But once again, this guy can only move basic dark energy. So this Heidi energy is kind of stuck on this Eternatus. And, and we can actually even discard it if we want to with Assault Tackle at some point as well. Uh, there's a Tool Scrap, right? That's kind of annoying. Losing the goggles on our Zamazenta. Uh, even losing this one, they can actually KO our Lucario Melmetal now this turn. They do play Nets. They would need another Goon and their fourth Net. Uh, and they would be able to actually kill my Lucario my metal this turn. Uh, but there's a bat to the bench. Um, so not going to happen this turn. Even if they net this one to create a bench space, they would have to put it back down. So, and not happening. They only have one more Crobat to work with. There's a fourth. There are four energy they've attached to five and four hiding. That's kind of funny. Four hiding energy. Um, perfect top deck. Switch it out. We can conserve the energy there if we want to. Research. Uh, and I guess just pass. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than nothing, though. Better than doing nothing. So we got pass we're gonna start to build up our zamazentas uh three metal saucer left in the deck to set up our second zamazenta hopefully sooner rather than later and we have a boss in hand so we can even start to focus something else down if we want to um the basic energy to an turn says v it's a big question is like how are they going to get through our zamazentas uh and the answer as of right now is like they don't have a ton of options to at all <laughs> they have no options to basically actually there's some Alan i would love to see a marnie oh they're gonna go ahead and but it does do it does zero damage they're gonna power accelerator here i think they're hoping to do damage uh but we used our gx attack from uh lucario Mel metal so it's gonna do zero um I'm sure, I'm sure they were hoping to hit us for damage and then set up this or maybe they're just trying to get the extra energy and play that's a good top deck in the dolph we do get a research here i don't know how much do i how much do i want to conserve this malamana versus seeing cards let's see a big question here would be how many Marnie are they down? Two. Um, a little bit torn here. I, I think I'm gonna go for the research to try and see more cards. We do lose a Mal Mana, which does not feel great to lose, but I think I think it's fine. It'll be fine. We can thin out the deck a little bit here. Get rid of Station, Grab Station. Actually, I maybe should chill with this a little bit because I might want a Mal Mana with Mal Mana. Uh, I'll do one. I'll do one here. I don't really want to put another station in play ever, but I do want to keep one around. We do have a fourth one in the deck. So maybe I should grab Lucario Melmetal there. Quick ball that away. Grabbed a Zation, and then I could have quick ball. I don't want to quick ball this way because I get like a Mal and Lana here. I want a Mal and Lana away Zation and quick ball um, as opposed to the bosses or the other Pokey gear in my hand. So I maybe should have chilled out there a little bit. I do that a lot where it's like, all right, aggressively sitting in the deck is always good, but wait, some of our cards require discarding cards. So we want to make sure we have enough bad cards to discard. Um, Okay, here comes a Venomous Fang. This is definitely something we want to Mal and Lana out of because this is a threat here. This Sableye is a threat uh, at this point. So we want to be able to Mal and Lana punch this. We don't have the goggles either. This actually feels pretty... We're getting pressured pretty hard here. Our opponent's in a pretty good spot overall. If, if Yeah, I, I would say my opponent's in a pretty good spot here, to be honest. I think they're in a pretty good spot. 
I'm not feeling great about this. Maybe I should just boss and hit the Sableye. Maybe that was the play I should have actually gone with here. See if we can get it. There's a Malolana top deck. Now, we only have one Malolana left in the deck, though. And if we don't get it... Oh, man. Um, I think I, like, have to hit here, though. I, I feel like I have to hit here. So, we're going to put the doll under. Assault Tackle. I feel, I feel like I can't not hit here. But now they get to run to another bat. Weavile the, the energy over. And then hit me with the new bat. And then once again, I'm not KOing that bat either. Yeah, here's the switch. And then Weavile. Wow, Weavile does a ton in this matchup for my opponent, actually, overall. And now they have a ton of energy in play. I don't think we're in a good spot at all here. I think that Weavile really is really good in this matchup, actually. Um, the, this tool scrapper to get rid of our goggles was a big deal as well. Otherwise, they'd be doing, like, no damage with this Venomous Fang. Not enough to like pressure us to have to switch, but 40 plus Poisoned would be 60 going into their turn if I don't switch. And then I definitely get knocked out by the Crazy Claws. Um, we're, we're in trouble. Let's see if we can get a Malon Lana here. There we go. There's another Malon Lana. So that is good. But is it good enough? I'm actually not sure. I might do something weird where I actually just boss up this Eternatus and try and trap it in the active. Maybe they can't move it. That might work. Um, how many? Sheesh, man. I I could try that. I don't know how many switch they would play in here if they play four hiding and the Weavile line. But man, is Weavile good in this matchup for them? I'm running again, man. I'm just running. Pass. I, they can have my Lily Spooky doll. <laughs> I don't want to attack. I don't want to like get it. Like in this situation, I feel like I don't have enough. I want to try and buy a turn through the doll. If they boss up my Zamba Center, I'm going to retreat it. I'm going to boss up their Eternatus. Try and make things awkward. But yeah, man, the, the combination of the Tool Scrapper plus having Weavile access really is is putting the pressure on us big time here. Um, and just making it super awkward, man. Making it super, super awkward. Um, <clears throat> they, well, we haven't lost yet, but yeah, I'm just going to bring up this Eternatus. If they want to hit with it, they have to, uh, they can hit with it, hit with it if they want to. Uh, the biggest thing I'm trying to make is that they can't retreat it. Okay. They have two boss down. How many do they play? They're fitting like a two, two Weavile line in here. They play nets, tool scrapper, trying to like think about how many, uh, what's it called? So they even have left. There's another doll for us. That's good. Wow, so turn just pass down. They do have enough basic energy in play where they can move three to the active and retreat it. But then I can boss it again. Uh, the biggest question kind of is how many switch... They also have nets, right? So, like, that's another way they can switch. So, they maybe only play, like, two switch. Because they do play four hiding energy. We know that for sure because we see two here and there's two in the discard pile that we got rid of earlier when we GX attacked. Um, the question is how many switches do they play? They could play four. There's a, there's a switch. See, now I think we're just going to lose to these switches. There's a Venomous Fang. If I have time to find some metal goggles for my Zamazentas, I think we have a shot here. I'm going to boss again. Uh, and I guess we'll have to Marnie next turn. Boss again. If it burns three energy, it'd be good to see that. They have even another Crobat they can do. Another reason this is like so good for them is because they have this Dark City in play and I don't play any Stadium cards. So this is like a, a decent enough combination. They play the Sableye. The Weave Outline, Dark City. I don't play a Counter Stadium, so it's like a good combination of cards to actually beat uh, Luke Metal, specifically the build that I'm bringing, because I just don't have answer. Like, if I just had an answer for Dark City, if I just play like two Chaotic Swell or something, we'd be in a way better spot, because it'd be so much harder for them to kind of run around the way they have been. Um, but I don't. So it's not that hard for them to run away, run around the way they have been. Um, I guess they can just Dread End KO the, um, the doll here. They don't have to hard retreat this turn. Um, but we just need to buy time. We need to force this thing into the active. I don't know where we go from here, though, to be honest. Maybe we can, like, create... Uh, maybe if they hard retreat it... Nah, create a Zacian and then Zacian KO. I don't even know. Zacian with goggles doesn't get one hit KO'd by a... What's it called right now? A Turnitus. Also, another question is how many bosses they have left? Specifically in, like, a list that my opponent's rocking here. Um... Yeah, specifically in a build like my opponent's rocking here, uh, how much room do they have? You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so if we can, like, I don't know, if we could go Zacian, top deck like a research, Zacian, Saucer, Attach, Research into uh, another Saucer, Goggles, Switch, K. Like, if they have to hard retreat and then move these two basics over to this Crobat, we KO it, we could win. They, then they don't have any energy in play to work with. Um, then, well, then they could hit us with this, but then we could hit this back, remove an energy. And maybe they're just out of energy at that point because they got two here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It really depends on if they have to hard retreat here or not. Because if they don't have to hard retreat, if they just have a switch and they have enough energy to work with to probably close out the game, um, which means we're probably just going to lose. But we got to wait and see what they have left. Like I said, they have a uh, a lot of stuff in here. There's the pass. Um, Well, they pass, so I kind of don't want to put Zacian in play for them. So I don't think we're putting Zacian in play. I think we're just going to hit again. We have one boss left. So if they pass again um for whatever reason maybe they just want to give themselves plus one turn to work with here because they know i can't knock it out it looks like that is maybe what they were trying to do here it looks like they maybe even top deck the switch as they're moving all the energy off the eternatus v max um or they're just letting it get knocked out and don't want to lose the energy but this means i can actually win i can win through boss's orders they can't ko this next turn if i have a if i ko this and then boss i win the game so we should go dig for that boss here um, as long as it's in the deck if it's not it's prized which is also fine it is in the deck so 11 card deck here metal saucer attach i'm gonna go ahead and play double switch here just burn as many cards out of the deck as possible marnie we're gonna get this knockout we're gonna get three prize cards our goal is to get this boss though no boss double goggles double goggles will give us time though because now crobat's not going to be doing very much damage so throw down the goggles take the knockout unfortunately we can't play a research next turn because i did burn so many cards so maybe i should have burned a few less cards um there there's a saucer that's great we can keep retreating between our zambas and just another saucer who knows uh another metal energy so we can retreat a lot here see now that we got the, the goggles um our opponent's crowbat's only doing 20 damage which is not enough for crazy claws to then knock us out so this is what the goggles are great hits here this will buy us a ton of time until we hopefully find that boss uh well, there's one card on the bottom of our deck so six cards between us and that and we could drop top deck another marnie as well our last marnie and then marnie into the boss guaranteed um, or our opponent could marnie us and then marnie us into it as well but i have a feeling um they probably don't play quite uh probably any more than two marnie they probably play two marnie so this is they probably aren't gonna marnie me we're kind of relying on our top deck unfortunately i can't research anymore um, unless I have a Lily's Pokey doll left in the deck, which actually I might have. A, oh, there's a reset stamp. So they could give us the boss here, but this does open it up so that we can actually play this research now. So here comes that Venomous Fang. But now that we have the goggles, mine is 60. So 10 plus 10 from the poison. I'm gonna go attach to retreat. Then research. Now we're so much closer. There it is. Um... I want to use the switch while I have the switch. I think I'm going to go... Yeah, Metal Saucer again. Yeah, we are that boss away from winning the game now. Yeah, I think they got a little bit greedy when they just kind of... Like, all right, they can just have three prize cards. Uh, maybe thinking they just kind of win eventually anyways. But I think they forgot that I can kind of... You know, I don't just win to the point... I don't just win the game when they can't no longer talk my, attack my Zamazentas. Uh, I can also just win by, you know, drawing six prize cards before my opponent does, which sometimes happens uh, with Luke Metalization. I feel like Metalization sometimes just wins by running your opponent kind of out of resources, and it's like, you still win by drawing your six prize cards, but like against like Pikaram and stuff, you, you just kind of, they don't have a way to win the game anymore, uh, and that's kind of your win condition. But this time, we're just going to like, they, my opponent can still win the game, but uh, we're just going to win a little bit faster here. I'm going to take it, take out this Crobat, and we do end up with the dub, but I think it is kind of on the back of a mistake from my opponent yeah the weavile the dark city combo is super good here actually uh, and it almost got us it almost got us I think my opponent was a little bit greedy being like you know i'm just gonna wait and just let this return to get knocked out trying to conserve all my energy instead of hard retreating i think they should have gone for that hard retreat i think that definitely gave them a better shot overall but hey we'll take that dub all right getting to know we won the coin flip um i have been liking to go second especially when i don't know what my opponent's playing um i'm gonna go second here i'm gonna go second just Playing that draw supporter on the first turn can really be a big difference by how on how good of a setup you have or how explosive of a turn two you can have. You know, being able to use like a research to discard some metals, play a couple metal saucers can really lead into some really explosive turn twos with like bosses orders and stuff. So I have been liking, yeah, just going second. It's just kind of felt pretty good overall. So we're gonna choose to go second here. 
Um, and a lot of decks like going uh, second in this format as well. Um, it looks like we're maybe up against uh, Mirror Match or ADP Zation. Our opponent has that Dragon deck box. So it's probably ADP Zation. They like going first. So maybe not the best call from me <laughs> overall. But we don't even have an energy. This is what I'm talking about. Like We don't even have an energy to attach for turn, which we want to do every single turn with this deck. Um, so yeah, we don't even have an energy to attach for turn that we'd love to do. Uh, but because we have to play this Marnie now, all of a sudden, we can probably get that energy. There's a Power Plant, though. So we maybe are actually in a Mirror Match. Nope, there's an AD Power Plant ADP. I feel like you don't see that ever. <laughs> I was going to say, I was saying, saying very often. I feel like you don't see that ever, uh, ever, ever, ever. Uh, but here it is. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so our goal is going to be to GX attack the ADP after they GX attack with ADP. Um, ooh, they play Big Charms. That's going to be annoying. We do not play the Tool Scrapper. Big Charm hasn't been super popular in ADP Zation. That's why I haven't been, uh, that's why I'm not currently like considering the Tool Scrapper in this deck at all. So, um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Tool Scrapper would be really nice. It's nice to be able to go, like, Steel Fist into Brave Blade to KO the ADP, but I'm going to have to hit it a little bit harder, it looks like, uh, with the two attacks, but that's not that big of a deal. Not too worried about it. Um, our goal is to get Luke Metal in the active on turn two and knock out the ADP, but, wow, we didn't even get an energy here. Um, looks like that's not going to happen. Intrepid Sword, two Metal Energy... That's not bad, but we don't have a, a an attachment to back it up, so we can't even go like boss KOization or anything, which would be great because this uh, station is holding two metal energy. But KOing the station it would just be pretty good. <laughs> uh, it would give us something to do on our turn at the very least. We do risk kind of just losing the game on the next turn because we haven't GX attacked with Luke Metal yet. Um, yeah, kind of unfortunate uh, situation we're in, to be honest. And yeah, here comes that uh, altered creation from our opponent. Nothing we can do about it. And yeah, at least we get the double on Intrepid, even though we with the attachment. Double off Intrepid doesn't happen all the time, so it kind of makes up for it a little bit. But it doesn't make up for the fact that we don't have a Luke Metal to respond to this ADPization. This one might be over really quick here. Gonna go ahead and hit another Marnie here. I, I can Brave Blade this, but that really does not feel that good. I want to really get this to the bench and hide it behind something. Um... No great option. I could run to Zamazenta. Man. This is a terrible spot. We found the Luke Metal finally. But, uh... Really nothing else. Really did not find anything. I think we have to do this here. Um, Hide behind the Zamazenta. Intrepid. Get another energy back. That's great. Um, and then we'll see where it goes on the next turn. I, I mean, I don't even... I could have gone full metal wall for one, but that feels really bad because I'm going to get ultimate raid, and then there's just so far ahead on the damage in play that I feel like we're going to lose anyways. Um, them ultimate raid, my Zamazenta is just fine, though. I'm 100% fine. I do not want them to have a boss. Well, they have the boss. <laughs> now they get to ultimate raid, my Lucario Melmetal. But now we can GX attack back, and our Zacian has one energy on it. We need to find a Goggles to probably protect this Zamazenta. Need another Zacian with the Goggles as well. Definitely still possible to win this one, but it doesn't feel great. I can tell you that much. This does not feel great at this point um, at all. Uh, we'll we'll try and do our best. We're going to do our best. Get a third basic energy in the discard pile. Our Metal Saucers are super live right now. Yeah, they got a lot of energy. We'll see, man. All right. Coding. It's possible this, they didn't really do a whole ton of stuff. It's possible this gets stuck in the active for a turn, which opens up the possibility for us to all of a sudden boss chaos something off the bench. This hand, this ain't it. Uh, so now we're really hoping that happens. And then if we could top deck a Metal Saucer, actually, we could Metal Saucer here, switch boss knockout, and then even Mount Lana, if they hit us with a station, we could Mount Lana back, uh, hard retreat the Luke Metal, knock out another station. This is all assuming our opponent's ADP gets stuck. Which it could. I mean, they're down a switch. There's the Intrepid. Can we top deck a Metal Saucer is the question now. What do we got? Mm, not That's not a Metal Saucer. <laughs> um, now, it was stuck last turn, so it could be stuck this turn. So, I th think I should just go attach Intrepid. I could Mallow and Lana the Lucario Melmetal um, into the Zamazenta as well. Definitely should attach here. Um, if I heal 120, it would have 60 on it. I don't think we can ever get this out of range of getting knocked out. So I could Mal and Lana just for the switch effect. 
into the Zamazenta. That feels bad too. I could go into the Zacian and they can't one hit KO the Zacian, but that would stall time, I guess. Instead of going knockout, knockout, it would force boss, boss. Instead of going knockout, boss, knockout. Okay, I guess it is a little bit better. They can't hit, they can't one hit KO this is the thing I'm getting out of this. Trepid. That's some energy, man. We need another Zacian though, really. The energy's nice. It's nice. It's getting a little overkill at this point. We whiffed our turn one attachment. Now, all of a sudden, all these Intrepid Swords are hits for two. Like, it's nice. I'm not saying I don't want the energy. But, uh, it's not necessary. <laughs> we, another Zacian would be nice. I don't need this much energy on one Zacian. However, a little bit of energy on all my Zacians. Oh, and they have the switch here. Do they have the boss to go with it? Are they going to try and attempt to go that boss boss route? Um... Yeah, if I, if I could have healed, well, I would have healed 120, would have had 60 on it, and then, yeah, I would never have gotten out of range out of a Brave Blade. They have a Marnie here. All right, this is good for us. We can go knock out this station, and then this Marnie hopefully leads us into another station, and hopefully some Metal Saucers. We haven't seen any of those yet. There's the station. There's a Research. Okay, so Zacian Research, uh, find some Saucers. If we get really lucky, we hit like, oh, no, wait, no, it doesn't knock me out, right? There's still 10 shorts. Yes, okay, I got scared for a second. I was doing the math in my head really fast. I was like, uh... Yeah, still 10 short. All right. Yeah, some saucers. Give me some saucers. Like, double saucer goggle switch would be insane. Oh, we almost got there. I got the goggles. I got saucer. I, got, I think it's actually, like, it feels like it's just going to be correct to retreat and attack with this one. I'm going to thin out the deck a little bit here as well. We need to hit a switch. Because if I just leave this in the active... Uh, if I go attack, because they can just set up a third Zacian, not that difficult. I have to make it as hard as possible, I feel like. Um, I, I want to retreat here, but then it also feels kind of greedy. So I'm torn. I'm torn here. I I really wish I'd hit a switch. That's what I really wish. I really wish I'd hit a switch. I could switch into this one. Let's do it. Let's see how it goes. I'm down. It feels good. I'm, I'm, it feels right because like now, once again, I'm forced. Like if I just leave this one in the act and my opponent is up this one, they knock out, they benchization, attach, metal saucer. Um, and then I set up this one, hit, and then they just go, okay, metal saucer, uh, boss, like, or attached boss, and I lose. So I want to force them to have as much as possible every single turn. So this feels a lot better than the alternative. And I could even try and do it again with this station, but that would probably be unless If they hit into this, I just get a switch doll. I will... I don't even know if I want to bench this. I might want to bench another doll, actually, instead. I'm like kind of torn on... We'll see what they hit here. They might have the boss KO, uh, in which case this guy resets itself. Um, oh, they didn't know we had the Zamazenta. I kind of messed that up a little bit, I guess. Um, but... What? Why didn't they... Why didn't they put my Zamazenta on the bench? <laughs> All right. Whatever. We know they didn't, but they, go, they Guz Mahala and got an Aurora. So that means they can Brave Blade us. They don't KO. They're running. They are running away to a Dedene. I think we got this one. Uh, somehow, it feels like both games. Oh, somehow our opponent, I feel like they've kind of given us the win almost a little bit. Um, I didn't, I'm not gonna, I didn't do the whole, I didn't do all the work myself. I did not do all the work in these games myself. Oops. Uh, I do have to... I did not hit a switch. I did... There was three switches in my deck. I did whiff. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna... Nope. Now, we have one Metal Saucer left. I could hide behind a doll here. Hold up. What's left in the deck? There's one Metal Saucer. There is three switch. Yeah, we... I kind of just like... I'm gonna hit the switch here. I didn't hit the switch there. Um... The thing is, I only have one draw supporter left in that Marnie. I do have a Marnie prized that I could pull when I KO this to Dene as well. But then I also have to hit the Metal Saucer. So if I run now, and an Intrepid Sword, does it give me a better chance of winning the game? They are down three Metal Saucer now. Down quite a few energy. I just don't know. I, I like retreat, take the knockout get my last metal saucer win the game is is good but i could just run force the boss means and if they boss the turn that means they don't have another chance to like set up a zation they would boss get one of these and i return get i think i like the retreating play here we're gonna go with it once again kind of running away they also need a switch card another double hit on the intrepid so sure 
Uh, this one feels good. No switch still. <laughs> There's still three switch in my deck. Uh, we did find the Marnia as well. Uh, but now they also need a switch card to move the Dedenne. And they didn't have a really good... They didn't have a very good turn last turn either. So I, I, I kind of like this play. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm not super confident that this is going to be the, the game winner for me. The, just retreating and hitting also seemed fine. And then obviously if they want to respond... Uh, they'd want to use this. I guess if they got like double e-switch to ADP, then we'd definitely be in trouble. And they haven't used any e-switch left. And now it looks like they're going for that play. Um, that would have been really bad if I had hit with this one. Retreat hit with this one. And then they just went like with that. Then we would have been in big trouble, actually. Um, they switched to a Rangaroo here, though. There's a Marty, but we have, uh, ooh, two boss left. No boss. We really don't want to not hit... We just want to hit this Zacian. We don't want to hit anything else. Wow, what an awkward game this has developed into being. Maybe we'll top deck at Pokegear our boss. We'll see. Yeah, what an extremely awkward game. There's a gear. There's a boss on the bottom of the deck. I don't have a way to shuffle. This should hit it though, right? Yeah. It's a boss. Let's see. I'm going to go with goggles. Uh... Here, I guess. Metal saucer here. And I can attach here or here to hard retreat in case they're trying to like boss stall something. Um boss this. I mean I just I don't see another let's just do it. <laughs> I'm like trying to come up with something else. But let's attack. Um I could attach this. I'm gonna I do have the switch in hand. I'm gonna attach here. Maybe I can hard retreat it. And then still attack with it on the following turn if I have to for some reason. All right, knockout. There are now two Poke Gear and a boss. So a quarter of my deck is out to boss KO the Dedene or the Mawile. My opponent needs attachment plus boss into boss. There's no way I can KO this ADP. So we're re relying heavily on top deck uh, gear or boss here. Uh, actually, there might be three gears. I think one is still prized. There's a stamp. We like to see that because our hand was not gear. There's a gear. There's a boss in our deck. We're in a top deck return. There's 12 cards in the deck. One boss. Um, there's the boss. And if they hit another boss, we do just lose. Wait, they might not have energy. They still need energy. Hold up. They are down quite a few, right? One water. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they, they, they didn't hit. So now we get plus one turn to work with. So we're going to try and end the game here. I'm just going to go gear. We'll see what we hit. It's a Marnie. We can take it. Attach. Now we get to play the Marnie. Draw one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we can bench the doll, or I could quick ball the doll, which I think I actually might quick ball the doll here. Quick ball the doll. I have nothing. So now, like, what, half of our deck, or a little bit less than half of our deck is out. Now I can switch hit, or I'm nothing going to switch. Switch is always happening here because we want to protect prize cards. We could just Intrepid Sword, or we could hit, and then anything else they send up, I think we could KO anyway. So I think I'm just going to hit here. I think this is just fine. Uh, cause I, I don't think they can create a Zation. If they create a Zation, we can also one shot that. I, think, I guess the fear would be can they make a Zation? Can they go like Zation, E switch, attach, Zation, E switch, attach, switch, big charm. I guess they could. Zation, E switch, attach, metal saucer, big charm. Yeah. And then hit. Oh, they don't have boss though. So then they have to hit into this and then we can like hard retreat hit. And yeah, they're just researching and decking themselves out. So I think we got it. I think we got the dub here. Did not look good. Did not get that GX attack after they GX attack. We're still able to maneuver it in a way that gets us the dub though. And that's gonna do it for these games with the Poke Gear Luke Metalization. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did give the video a like or the content, be sure to subscribe. Let me know what you guys think is the best way to play Luke Metalization. The tag call build, the Poke Gear build, something else. Are you guys doing something else out there? Do you like crushing hammers? Do you not? Comment section. See you tomorrow.